Okay, we're back with Stephanie Arney from Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, and she said she has never done this for anyone before. Never. You guys are, <gasps> you guys are so special to us that uh, we were able to bring in a two-toed sloth. That is I so have, wow. I have, I have is not cool. even brought a sloth like anywhere ever. This is so exciting. Why, for why, me. What's the big deal about the sloth? You know, people think that when you see them, they're they're you know, right now your scene are just like. Yeah, but know, really, and lay on you. they can move quick if they want to. Mm. They can be feisty. It's still a wild animal. And if you see, <laughs> she's loaded with the very sharp long claws. And so those little things we have to consider when we travel an animal like this to a facility. And, you know, it's 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 a new habitat and everything. But thankfully, the folks, the ladies here from the Dallas Zoo are so, they feel so comfortable with this loss. This loss comfortable with them. And they fixed up this really cool tree so that you guys could get a really good look at her. This so is course. the animal that makes Kristen Bell cry. Yeah. I remember? I saw husband. that too. She's like, she's bawling yeah. and he got her sloths for her birthday just to visit. I so know. Her. I saw that too. And, you know, I think because of her, sloths have been so popular in the last mm. few years. Yeah. Sloth Sanctuary is down in Costa Rica. Their donations have increased like tenfold. So huh. it's amazing how a celebrity could see something like this and be so impacted by it emotionally. Uh -huh. And that's really goal. That's the goal of a zoo or a wildlife sanctuary. We want you to be impacted that way. So you volunteer your money or your time or even just share information on your social media. That's our, it's not a sneaky goal here. That's what we want. It's all about, it's all about love for nature. Well, now I know <laughs> who to call when it's bring your sloth to work day. <laughs> so, okay. How you know the difference between different types of sloths? Um, well, first of all, they all kind of do look a little, little bit different, but the easiest way is looking at the claws at the very top. Right. Two-toed in the front. Two-toed. If this was a three-toed, three toes in the front okay. and three toes in That's the back. obvious difference. So the craziest <laughs> things about this animal, very slow metabolism. Mm -hmm. They're a lot like a cow, so they have four stomachs. Four? It's, yeah, so they're constantly ruminating, and that because of that, they don't have a lot of energy, and that's why they get that I'm um, super slow sloth kind of um, yeah. behavior. Now, they they do travel between from tree to tree, but guess how they travel? Because they, they can't walk very well with claws. Like, imagine the, that chick you saw with, like, Guinness Book of World Records yeah. nails. Okay, can't type, can't go on your phone. Cable sloths, they can't walk with those things. Do and they Tarzan it up and swing? <laughs> they don't swing. They actually will drop Uber. from a tree when the water and the rainforest has raised. They'll uh. drop off of it into the water. Amazing swimmers. They'll swim to another tree. Oh, Isn't wow. that credible? Yeah. I can <laughs> so it. not a good walker, but a great, a great swimmer. So since they do spend so much time up in trees, I wanted to point out to you guys, if you look closely, all of their hair grows upwards. Pet its head, pet its head. <laughs> JC's touching the sloth's head right Oh, now. I see what you're saying. Oh, it's almost like the sloth's on some sort of anti-anxiety medication. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's hot. Jenna's seen that look staring back at her in the mirror before. <laughs> My, maybe that's my spirit animal. Yeah, the hair, the hair is growing up. It's, it's like, like a backwards, hey backwards so, mullet. Lola's so cool. I know. Okay, so now oh, that you can see. She's mad that I walked away with the grapes. So look at how her fur goes downwards and then ends up at this tip. Does anybody have a guess why that is? No. Okay. So in the rainforest, <laughs> no. Clearly, no guess. clearly it rains a lot in a rainforest. Uh -huh. So when the water hits their chest, it follows all these oily, thick um, hair follicles yeah. and follows it all the way down until it drips off. Because this, although this animal, they can handle pretty big temperature ranges. It's mm -hmm. like 74 degrees Fahrenheit to 94 degrees Fahrenheit. It's pretty wide range before getting sick. But if they do get too cold, their metabolism shuts down and then they can't eat and then they starve themselves. And um, people have actually found them stuck exactly like this dead oh. in Costa Rica oh. like that, they just stay that way so it is important that the water runs off their body so that it doesn't get stuck in their fur kind of like the chinchilla right. very similar in that kind of aspect so another neat thing about their fur is because they do move slow and they can stay stationary for so long in the hair follicle they can grow algae now the, they don't but algae grows in the fur right and so why that's cool number one when they're grooming it gives them extra nutrition because when they're eating, they'll be cleaning out their fur, mm -hmm. and they'll get all that algae. It's food. And and algae, surprisingly, is highly nutritious. It's kind of like a dude with a big beard, you know, when he gets food <laughs> stuck in it. Yeah. It is, yeah. <laughs> okay. Same yeah. principle. Uh -huh. Exactly so the hungry. same. Exactly the same. <laughs> um, the other thing too is that their their fur is a perfect habitat for for moths. 
So it, a sloth is its <laughs> moth own ecosystem. Sloths. I can't even yeah, think moths and sloths. Okay. Yeah. So they'll grow <laughs> mo the like moths will lay their eggs and stay in there, and the eggs will be supplemented by that, um, or the baby moths will eat the algae. And so it, it's like, like own its own little ecosystem. world. Yeah. yeah. How crazy is that? So sloths typically like to eat vegetation. They're, they do love leaves, buds of leaves, but they also love to eat fruit. And so that's what <laughs> Big Al is feeding Lola right now is fruit. So she'll yeah, love yeah. applesauce and grapes. And then obviously there's a whole lot of fruit in Central right. and South America that I don't even know. The guy, there's so many that they eat. Are they, are they British by any chance? I mean, I know you said Costa Rica, but the, the teeth seem to be kind of good. Oh, you, oh, you see oh, that? <laughs> I resent that. <laughs> right? <laughs> All the British people are like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> Our teeth are fantastic. <laughs> So it, as you can see, they do have extremely sharp teeth. And the mm. reason for that is good, getting back to the fruit thing. In South America, they have crazy fruit that's really thick and their teeth will help break it open. Yeah. And orangutans have this similar similar teeth structure. Like they have hard, really hard things to help break open that fruit. And um, just kind of continuing from that, they're fruit, or frugivores or fruitivores, however you want to say it. So as they eat fruit, they'll eat the seeds. And then what happens when they poop it out? They grow trees. They grow oh, trees. The circle. Environmentalists. Of life. Wow. And it These moves sloths. us all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, who are the sloths friends with? Um, like in the wild. Yeah, who's their homies? Who do they get oh, along with? Um, I don't know that they really get along with anybody other than just moths. <laughs> moths oh, <wow. laughs> and sloths. You know, um, who's their enemies? Their enemies would be like that harpy eagle I was telling you about. Uh, so they have been seen these huge eagles. I don't even, do you know the um, wingspan of a harpy eagle right at the top of your head? Uh, it's big. It's over six feet. And so they'll they'll go and they'll see the tree, the animals in the trees like monkeys and sloths and they just easily with their talents and pick up sloths. It is the craziest dang. thing. I saw a YouTube video of it once. Harpy eagle picking up, I think it was a type of monkey, like howler monkey or something. And mm. I my mind is blown away that they mm. carry that much. But that is their number one predator. The other, the other one would probably be jaguar. So the another big mm -hmm. cat that's from South America. Yeah. What a stunning animal! This Isn't it, it really absolutely is. beautiful? Mm -hmm. I, a lot of people don't get to see a sloth up close, and I know that, like you said, Kristen Bell, like there's a lot of people that we see that they see a sloth and they're like, <gasps> yeah, Lisa, I have a lot going on inside, right? Sweet face. <laughs> so many emotions. Sweet, like, really, sweet face. There, maybe something's wrong with me. I'm just really overwhelmed. Well, Stephanie Arney from uh, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Where can we watch your web okay. series? So um, we have three different series out right now. We've been doing this for about a year and a half, and we just released an episode, <clears throat> excuse me, on sea otters, sea uh, leopard cubs, and manatees, and kangaroos. And uh -huh. today we just re released four short episodes under two minutes on kangaroos. And that was filmed at Tanganyika Wildlife Park in Kansas. So you can go to that on wildkingdom.com. It's really that simple. Or if you, have a, if you like YouTube, you can type in Wild Kingdom TV. And, mm, it's, and an orange, it's an orange box with a black silhouette of a lion. And then, of course, we're all over on social media, at Wild Kingdom for Facebook and Twitter and all that. And then also you can follow me at Stephanie Arnie on Instagram and Facebook. Perfect. Yeah. So awesome. cool. Thank you for bringing all these animals. You're especially welcome. Especially the sloth, because I know you guys don't do this very often. No, we don't. And this is this is so Forever. exciting for me. So thank you guys for having us here. Um, my friends at the Dallas Zoo love coming here. This is always Good. exciting for them as well. And I know that these are animal ambassadors. <clears throat> wow. <clears throat> these are animal ambassadors. And the fact that they get to come out and raise compassion and awareness about their species and other animals within their ecosystem is pretty awesome. Are you guys hiring? Like, what would I have to do to work part-time <laughs> on I know, the weekend? I, th I have the right people for you, you to talk talk to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that'd be a wonderful idea. Oh, There's yeah. also, you can be a docent at Zeus as well. So you can be, it's a highly trained volunteer. And the, those are opportunities that you could do at the Dallas Zoo. But like she said, you start off like cleaning up poop. It's not, you just don't get all the fun cuddles. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not just kind of community you service. from the bottom, literally. <laughs> now we have. <laughs> Started at the I bottom, now we here. <laughs> cleaning up that creature's number two. It, well, they only poop once a week, so oh, it like it's hard. Oh, Kelly, just like you. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Visit Wild Kingdom. Challenges of chronic constipation. Wild I feel sloth, Kelly. <laughs> Wildkingdom.com is where you can watch Stephanie yeah. Arnie and her escapades. Thank thanks you for, so much. Thank, thank you, and thanks for sharing, Give it up everybody. for Stephanie, everybody. Thanks, Stephanie. And Lola.